briefly introduce myself. My name is Dr. Damilola Edwin Brown. For those of you who are new to this platform, I'm an intentional dentist program. Um, I've worked in Canada in the dental industry for the last three years, and I'm currently in um, an international dentist program. And um, I believe in sharing, you know, my experience to help other people. So here we are. Okay. So thanks for joining the team. I hope you have as much fun as we have here. Um, I'm also going to try to post the post more often it's been a hectic few weeks for me but um thanks for you know keeping on here with me okay all right so back to um what i was saying previously um quite a number of people have been messaging me like it's been the same question and for some weird reason i just never really thought that you know that would be something that people would be interested in but um i don't mind sharing my experience i really don't mind okay so um today we're going to be talking about um what roles or what jobs you can do in the dental industry apart from working as a dentist so basically people have been asking can you still work in the dental industry even though you know i don't have a license i don't have a certificate I mean, I don't think anyone's expecting to work as a dentist in Canada without a license or a certificate. But what other things can you do? So I'm here to tell you that there's some other amazing roles that you can function in. I'm gonna state um, the names of the roles so that you can do your due diligence and go do some more research on it um because there's a and i'm also going to be dropping dropping a link for it there are quite a number of platforms where employers like drop job ads like every minute and then uh, people usually go on there you know search through what roles they're looking for you 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 apply you drop your resume the resume goes to the employer the employer responds back to you it's such an easy process of how to look for a job here okay um so i'm going to drop a link on that when i'm um, uploading the video so you can search and all that so let's get started so the first role that which is like the hot topic <laughs> the first role is oh can i walk or oh, the first question is oh can i work as a dental assistant in canada the answer is yes you can work as a dental assistant in canada um what you need to know is that there are two types of assistants in canada dental assistants in canada you can either work as a certified as a certified dental assistant or you can work as a non-certified dental assistant what's the difference the difference is whether you have a license, a certificate or not. Do you have to get the license and or certificate? Mm, I don't know. It really depends on what you want out of life, really. Um, so usually for the dental for the certified dental assistants, they usually go back to they usually go to school. So even if you're a dentist, you can apply to go to dental assistant school. It's usually a two year program. Some are even shorter um yeah two years some are even shorter and um there are many colleges that offer the dental assistant program because it's, it's such a booming industry right so why not produce more dental assistants right so you can do that um or you can write um the exam so they also have their own licensing dental assistant exams that you can also write so you basically just come in you write to you email to the board tell them that you want to write an exam write their exam they'll probably ask you for like a copy of your certificate you know and all that and all, and all that jazz and then you just write the exam and then they basically just give you a certificate saying that oh you 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 passed the exam so you're licensed or you're certified rather in um canada or you can work as a non-certified dental assistant so basically someone who didn't go through all the, all the stuff i just mentioned and you just all you just have is your harp certificate so i believe the full meaning is healing art radiography stuff 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 i would also um drop the full meaning um currently there are two um schools that are offering that um it's not a cost per se because it, well it's a cost but it's a short cost 
right so it's something you can just do in like maybe in three months and it's not because you're doing the course like back to back or sometimes you just do like a one day um lecture but it's just basically because there are three parts to it so they're spaced out that way and you can't do the second part until you finish the first part you can do the third part until you finish the second part so there are levels to it so it's three parts so that's why I'm the entire thing i just say maybe like three months or four months you know because you have to finish part one go to part two go to part three you get what i mean so that's that and then like i was saying there are two colleges that offer it um right now in ontario um the only province that has this provision that has this option is ontario every other province is very very strict so it's either you you're certified or you're not or you're not working as a dental assistant they are very very strict so the only problem is that offers that option is Ontario so that's why when people ask me this question the first the next question I ask them is what province do you want to go to that's what will determine what will be your best option or not you get what I mean right so as I was saying there are two colleges that offer it the problem right now is that um you know when everywhere shut down because of COVID Canada took it to another level you know and they just they just took it to another level i'm just going to leave it at that so then the college is also shut down right and so right now when you email this colleges they tell you oh we're still on the pause because we're trying to you know um modify the program such that they can still be um because of covid basically so they're trying to like modify the program to like kind of fit into the way um um colleges are you know delivering their lectures now you know even though the rest of the world <laughs> has kind of moved on but we're canadians so what sh what shall we say we just have to go with it so anyways that's what's happening right now so they've been on a long pause for like almost like a year now so nobody knows if that's just like a diplomatic response or if they're like if it's a diplomatic response and they're trying to like scrap it or if they're really trying to like figure out a better way to offer the cost. Nobody knows. We would never know, you know. So that's that option. Now, would which would be the best option to go for? Really depends on what you what you want out of life. Is money more important to you? Obviously, you're going the certified dental assistants are gonna be offered more, right? Okay, let me rephrase that statement. Technically. The center certified assistants are supposed to be offered more. However, you have some few dental providers who still offer them low, low money, right? I know um, a friend of mine who was um, who went to school, and um, she was being offered <laughs> something really, really low. You know, I I mean, it was really, really low, right? And so that was shocking to me because their dental assistant as association really has put out a range for what should be offered to certified dental assistants. So even though that's so, there's supposed to be a range, there will still be one person that would you know be different. So it depends. Anyways, um, back to what I was saying. So it really depends on what is more important to you. Do you really want to spend the money to go back to school as a dental assistant? It's two years, it's a lot of money. Okay, no, it's not a lot of money. It's achievable, but it's still money. You get what I mean? It's still money. Or do you want to like, you know, just like rough it and, you know, so for those that don't, don't understand what rough it means, it's like you just want to do all you can to make sure that, okay, you know what, you somehow, somehow, you know, just pass those dental assistant exams. They're not that hard. They're really, really not that hard because your dentist is kind of what you've been doing, right? They're not that hard. The only place where you probably have to like up your game is probably in terms of like the clinical aspect because dentistry is different here in North America. It's not so different, but um, the equipment, the tools, how things are passed, you know, to the dentist and things like that are different. So if you can get maybe um, a dental clinic to observe at, or if you can watch some YouTube videos, you know, it should be fine. I know people who have passed the exam, so it's doable, okay? And then, um, so the pay range is usually... For certified dental assistants, technically the minimum minimum should be like twenty two dollars, but 
people there are people who offer 18 they shouldn't be doing that but it's it is what it is it's their business you can do whatever right and then for non-certified assistants you can get as low as 16. the minimum wage right now in ontario i believe is 15 dollars. i don't know what it is in other provinces so technically no one should be offering you less than 15 dollars. but there will still be those um special people okay who will offer you less but legally they shouldn't be doing that okay so that's that situation so that's that's um about the pay um i must warn you maybe warn is not the word um i should just give you a heads up that working as a dental assistant in canada is not um it's not like the way dental assistants work in countries where we're from it's a bit intense it's a lot of work um it's a lot of demand on you clinics here are very fast paced and very production um oriented so in the space of one hour you may end up seeing two patients so you as a dental assistant you have to like turn over the room like real quick set up and out so it's it's a, it's it's um <laughs> it's um what's the word i want to use um <laughs> it's a sport it's really intense okay so if you had to have a person that uh let's take like easy let's take like jj what i mean by jj is like you like to take things calm and easy just know that this is what is coming your way if you decide to work as a dental assistant because i know a friend of mine who stayed working as a dental assistant and then he was like you know what i can't do this anymore <laughs> and he left you know because it was tedious so just a head okay and then you can also work um, in a dental admin team. So usually we have dental receptionists, we have um, dental managers, we have um, dental treatment coordinators. So in terms of hierarchy, the dental manager is higher and then the dental um, treatment coordinator is, I wouldn't say she's higher than receptionist, but the pay is slightly more, like extra $1, extra $2, right? Um, so the dental receptionist, I mean, from the word, it's pretty straightforward. Your reception, your admin, that's pretty straightforward, right? So for the dental treatment coordinator, I would say the treatment coordinator and the receptionist, the role is interchangeable. In fact, some clinics offer, um, some clinics employ one person to, to do both, right? Because they're cheap. That's a cheap way to go, right? And some clinics do two separate people doing the role, right? um so yeah the roles are very interchangeable you have you, the treatment coordinator does some receptionist work and then also you focus on fit, um financial or should i say treatment and financial planning for the patient so you're basically like the middleman between the patient and the dentist right and then um yeah so that's what that role entails um i don't know that you need a certificate for that most clinics just train you themselves right because the thing is dental practices each dental practice has a separate dental software that they use in like you know um like for example like their appointment booking system is is a different dental software from another another clinic right so they most clinics prefer to train you but there's schools that actually afford dental admin or dental receptionist as a course so if you have the money you can go you can do it it just makes it just um gives you higher negotiation negotiating power right because obviously you come in and tell them okay you know you have a degree and all that and all that jazz you know so you can actually um it gives you more um the opportunity to earn more but the range is still the range <laughs> you know what i mean so it, it just gives you an opportunity to earn more to ask for more because you're coming in certified so there's schools that actually offer dental dental receptionist um programs right most of them are like sh a short like a year six months eight months it depends on what province you're in or you know what school you go to you know what i mean so you can definitely do that um I don't know that there's a, tr a separate treatment coordinating course, but I expect that for a dental receptionist program, they should probably like touch up on everything because a receptionist also might find herself in a situation where she also needs to do treatment coordinating. So basically what treatment coordinating is, is 
basically a patient comes in okay the doctor has spoken to the patient okay this is this is you have to do treatment a b c d are you doing or you're not doing basically what that means is do you want to be treated or do you want to carry on with the treatment or do you want to go home and think about it if they say okay yes they want to you know do the treatment then they hand then the treatment coordinator comes in and then takes it up from there so the treatment coordinator speaks to the patient about the cost because the thing is most dentists here have like you're like i was saying you see a lot of patients so they kind of like have divided the the labor in such a way where okay one person takes care of the treatment co co um, treatment conversation with the patient while i go see my other patients who are waiting you know what i mean so that's kind of how it works so the treatment coordinator comes in speaks to the patient about costs um what what is going to happen from now because after you've agreed then they have to the, the dental admin team has to send um treatment codes treatment codes is basically um numbers that represent what treatment right so they send it off to the insurance and so the insurance has to let them know let us know let the dental office know if the patient will be covered or not so that's basically and then you're following up with the patient you know because usually insurances also provide the response to the patient so you're also following up with the patient so imagine if your dentist has to do all that anybody got time for that you know so that's what the treatment coordinator does okay and then um the dental manager usually is just supervise just supervising everything so sometimes also you jump in to help with the team with the dental admin team you know you're also helping to um build the practice up you're also in charge of like marketing for the brand you know just it's like ma it's like managing a business do you understand so i mean there are people who I mean, if you ask me if you need a certificate for that, I would say yes and no because yes, of course, like if you're going to manage a person's business, you should you should have the knowledge on how to do that in order to ensure that the business is growing in the right direction. So you should have that um, knowledge to do that. So I would say yes, but knowing the sense that because that knowing the sense that I've seen clinics where they just pick someone from the from the receptionist team and they promote her or they promote him to become the dental manager so it's just what works for you honestly excuse me and then um might i add that the dental industry in canada is very female saturated and that's not by mistake it's because with every service industry, people just have this bias. It's unspoken, but people just have this bias, or not maybe it's not bias, but people just feel that um, people are more comfortable around females. So you find that even in most service industries, you find a lot of females. So as a guy, you might not find it so easy to get a dental job, only if you're an assistant, only if you're a dentist, okay? But all these other roles you might not except for so as a dentist or as a manager that's fine but all the other roles dental assisting everything i'm going to talk about you might not find it so easy to get it because they always prefer females even though they don't really say it and it makes absolutely no sense to me but it, it is, it's just what it is okay so let me just chip that in and then um i just might try to thought there so I was talking about working as a dental manager. So you can decide to go to school. You can decide not to go to school. It depends on, on what works for you. In fact, there's this trend where people, where um, some practices prefer to hire foreign trained dentists to work as dental managers. I don't know what the logic behind it is. Um, but yeah, I've noticed that. I've seen that happen. So yeah, you can go for that. And then... Um, you can also work as a dental hygienist as well. That was the last thing I wanted to say. You can work... No, sorry. There's one more rule. You can work as a, work as a dental hygienist. This one, you, you have to go to school. You you definitely have to school, go to school. Because the thing is, they're treated as well... Like, the dental hygienist role is is almost at par with um, a dentist. So, you have to go to school. Like, it's, it's regulated. It's a regulated profession. So you have to go because the, the other thing is you have um you have dent, dental hygienists who can actually 
um who actually go ahead to open up their own dental practice they just hire a dentist and they and, and they're making the money so you have to go to school the programs are usually between two to three years um, so you have to go to school the programs are usually between two to three years um so again depends on the province it depends on where you decide to what college you decide to go to and the last role is to work as a sterilization assistant also called a floater so basically you're in charge of washing the instruments washing cleaning also sometimes you come in come in and help with the turnover of the room so when i say turnover basically once the patient exits once the patient is done from the room and the exit you go in you help the chair side assistant to clean the room and also set it up for the next patient but your major role is sterilizing the instruments and making sure that the instruments are clean testing putting all your testing indicators to make sure that um even though a cycle was a cycle a cycle went through it was um what's the word it was a successful cycle meaning that the instruments were completely um sterilized because sometimes the the machines the aut autoclaves are um they're defective and so even though a cycle was run through like um, successfully the instruments might not be sterilized so that um yeah you so you have to be you have to like be sharp in the mind you have to notice things and all that you have to be very well coordinated but i mean your dentist of course you are <laughs> you know so um yeah those are the rules do you need a certificate for that no but there's um some practices ask you to get um a certain um sterilization certificate for the for for some weird reason i can't remember the name right now but i'll try to find it and add it as a link to this um post so they just ask you to you know like get the certificate um it's not a long cost it's just like a one day thing where you just sit in front of your computer for like an hour or 20 minutes or 30 minutes you just retreat and that's it some offices even offer it to you as part of your onboarding task like what i mean is that's part of your introduction um to the clinic they offer that to you like okay you know do this before you actually start that's it basically so it's not really it's not a hard thing to do so yeah what's the pay range um they don't pay that much for them to be quite honest sometimes you might get paid minimum wage ontario which is 15 depending on what province you are other provinces sometimes have lower minimum wages so you might get paid somewhere between 15 and 18 you know they don't really offer that much and it's a lot of work so i really wouldn't advise anyone to do it but it's up to you um someone also asked me <laughs> this was a funny question if i were your, if i were your kid sister <laughs> what would you advise me to do well if you were my kid sister first of all you'd have been here a long time ago but anyways i'm just joking but um yeah i mean like i i take you all as family so what i would say is before you come to canada um you have to get yourself into canada first maybe if i have the time i'll try and do another post um on immigration you know i'm not promising if i have the time i would try to do it but you have to get yourself into canada first but before you even come you have to have an outline of what your goal is what you want to do um when you get here like obviously there's some people who come in and like <laughs> like me some people like me you just come in and you're like chasing your dreams or becoming a dentist like immediately and then there's some other people just come in okay let's just chill for a year let's just settle in you know and you know that works for them too so that would that's what would determine what what role to go for because obviously if you're coming in here and you just want to chill here and you just you just want to chill you just want to live your life for the first year then you can work as an, an hygienist you know or you can even go to school to become an hygienist uh, to become a hygienist rather you can go to school to become a hygienist, you know, because you're taking it easy. Then later on, hey, you can now start pursuing to become a dentist. You get what I mean? And then you can now start doing the things that you need to do to become a dentist, like write your exams and all that and all that. I mean, I know people who um, 
you know the workers are hygienists and because obviously so the hygienist thing is separate room from the dentist so obviously like you can't see what the dentist is doing now so they work as a hygienist they work as hygienists and then they just observe like during their free time or maybe on the deals just observe and see what the dentist is doing or they just watch things on youtube just to keep your mind refreshed because the thing about dentistry is the longer you stay away from it the, the more you, you you become out of touch you know it's a it's a hand skill so that's just one thing or if you're someone who wants to start pursuing dentistry immediately then you start you have to start thinking okay you know what ah, okay do i want to write exams do I, want, do I want to write board exams or do i want to sorry not board exams do i want to go through the whole equivalency process if you, you're trying to figure out what i'm talking about look at my previous post do you want to do the equivalence process or do you want to go to school you know, those are the things that will inform your decision. Okay, I want to go to school. Okay, so I have to not think about what job to do that will look good on my resume. Okay, I can work as a receptionist. That will look good on your resume. But if I work as an assistant, that will look even better. You know what I mean? So, okay, you now start pursuing. Okay, I want to work as a dental assistant. You get what I mean? Even if it's just, even if it's treatment coordinator, the fact that you're even in the dental industry shows that you're not out of touch. You get what I mean? So that's 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 what i'm talking about when i say you have to know what you want right but obviously as you're just coming out you, you know you're not coming in because you have a mansion here in in in, in canada you're coming as a newcomer so your first priority really should be to settle in because the money i bring in i don't know that it's higher than i don't know if, if the value is higher than that of the canadian dollar so now it's it's a matter of counting down to when that money will finish so your priority should be to get a first job that you can even survive in sorry you can even survive with so i always tell people that come on you know you're just coming in freshly you don't want to be financially strapped um you know sorry not financially strapped but you don't want to like be like broke that's the worst thing that can happen for you to be broke in the, in a country where you don't know anyone right so your fi your first priority should be um getting any job you know i'm not saying any job as in a job that will kill you or a job that is is bad but like there's still good jobs like you can as you're applying to um become a dental assistant or a receptionist or whatever you want to do in the dental industry you can also be applying in non-dental roles i mean you can work as a receptionist in any other organization you can apply to work in retail so retail is like all these um like stores like walmart places where they sell food sell clothes and all that you can you can work in that role you, you get what i mean they, they make at least minimum wage which is something you can survive on if it's just you by yourself you know if you're coming your family you can combine two jobs you know there's always a way around all these things you can combine two jobs or you can you can get a car you can do uber like the di different things you can and the thing is those jobs are usually easier to get compared to the dental jobs because with the dental jobs hmm, health industry in general in north america is so heavily guarded right so they're not always so open-minded to receive new people what do i mean new people people that don't have north american experience people who are new immigrants they're not so open even though nobody sees it but you see these things that are happening you get what i mean so i would say get that first job if it's a retail job that are easier that's easier for you to get get it and then now start walking your way into the industry that way so with these few points of mind, I hope I have been able to answer everyone's questions. I don't expect people to DM me with the same uh, questions that have been answered today, please. Eh? But if you have any follow-up questions, like things that maybe I didn't touch on, you can definitely still DM me. If you still have the same question, I'm just joking. You can DM me, right? You can you can DM me. It's it's okay. It's fine. I'll answer. If I want me to answer this question 20 times, I will answer. You know, you know that's what I'm saying. But I would prefer not to. So listen to this post. But I'll answer. If you have any follow-up questions, just um, DM me. I'll try to respond as, as much as I can. Nice um, speaking to you guys once again. Um, I know I haven't, I haven't posted this often. I will try to. Okay. I will try to. Okay. Bye. <laughs>